Hi and welcome back. Thanks for watching. This will be my first video in a series of videos that introduce you to um, rubber stamping and paper crafting. There's a lot of videos out there that have techniques, but my goal is to show people who are either new to crafting in general or who are new to rubber stamping, um, you know, just to give you a taste of what it's all about. Um, there's all different kinds of crafts out there, and I feel like there's, I don't know, maybe not enough um, intro videos so people can see, like, what it's about before they purchase things. So in this one, we're going to go over the different kinds of stamps and the different kinds of um, equipment used to stamp with. So back in the day, they used to make, well, primarily the wooden, the wooden stamps were popular. So this is your image on top of the wooden stamp. And then the stamp itself is attached to the wood. And then your image is on the rubber. Now, I have a ton of these, but I don't use them that much, honestly. Um, I will buy new ones if they have an image I really like. But I typically don't buy them because, as I'll show you, it's kind of hard to see. Like, if you have enough ink applied to your stamp or if you're missing ink... Uh, the clear stamps make it a lot easier to show that, but I just wanted to show you guys the options that are out there. So this is an example of another one. They come in all shapes and sizes. I remember I really like this one because of the, I look like tulips on there. But yeah, I honestly don't use these a lot. Um, apparently there is a way to remove the rubber from the wood if you have any of these. I have not tried this yet, so... Don't quote me on it, <laughs> but apparently if you stick it in a microwave for 10 seconds, you can, uh, it melts the adhesive. I don't know. Give it a try. Let me know. So then you have clear stamps, and these are pretty much what's available right now, uh, along with the other rubber stamps I'll show you. But the clear stamps are great because you can see the amount of ink that's on there, and it's great for masking when you cover a part of the stamp or, like, when you put two images together and you want to um block an image of that a part of that image so you can see you know so it looks like like two cups are sitting together or something if that makes sense um so i love the clear stamps this is what i primarily get um this one i'm going to show you what we do with them but i'll just go through a couple of them first to give you an idea so basically the clear ones come in a package and they come already on a piece of plastic and then when you're done using them, we'll say you want to use it, you just open it up and you remove your stamp you want to use. And then when you're done with it, you put it back. And then you just cover it up. After you clean it, you cover it up and then you put it back into its container. Um, and there's, you know, there's certain ways you can store them. I don't do anything fancy. I store them in those like plastic freezer bins for the, for the, the refrigerator, I think you have them at Marshalls or TJ Maxx. And I stand them so they're like standing up and I can just flip through them. So these are some more, just showing you a variety. There's all kinds of stamps out there. Um, I like the cutesy stuff. Uh, the cuteness kills me, I say. Because <laughs> it's just, uh, it's adorable. And there is something to that that's saying, you know, it's different from buying the craft supplies and actually using them. Yeah, that is true. So this is Hello Bluebird. There's all different brands. I haven't used these yet. These are called Frosty Friends. Like, I, I like snowmen. So I think it's cute. There's a little bear holding a stocking. A little snowman holding a coffee. Adorable. Another company is Lawn Fawn. Their stuff is great. They, they're coming out with a lot of interactive dyes, uh, which I'll talk about in another... Uh, video, but um, like you, you know, cards don't have to just be flat anymore too. Which, what's, which is what's really fun about stamping is there's so much you can actually do, and you don't have to just make cards either. Which is what I'm kind of branching out into. But so here's another clear set. And then I'll go through these kind of quick. This is neat and tangled. A lot of them come with the sentiments. And what's great is with these sets, you can mix and match. Like certain companies, you can mi mix and match their old stamps with their newer ones. Honeybee. Their stuff's adorable. Bear. So cute. I know everything's adorable. And then, this is going to be another video, but most stamps come with a die set. So what a die set is, it's, it's, is it's the metal piece that's in the shape of your stamp. 
So instead of just stamping flat on paper, the die will cut out the shape of your stamp and then you can like pop it up so it's another piece of paper. Um, if that makes sense. I know it's probably sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. But um, you do need a machine for that. It's called a die cut machine. Um, and I'll do that in another video. But I mean, I do recommend the dies. I do also have a brother scan cut machine, which I'm still getting used to, uh, which is a machine that will cut out the shapes and you don't necessarily need the separate dies to go with it which does save you money if you're going to use it but that machine is not it's not cheap either <laughs> so i'm going to be honest like this isn't the cheapest hobby but you make it what it is if you're like me and every new release you're like oh my god i have to have that then you know it adds up but again your supplies if you treat them well you're gonna they're gonna last you forever so these were the clear stamps and now these are the thicker rubber stamps, so I'll show you the difference with these. This is Taylor Expressions. Her stuff is great. They're really cute. Just my one recommendation, and if she's listening, love you and love your stuff. My one comment is these are usually smaller than the actual size of the stamp. Like the images are bigger than they are on the front. So just make sure you keep that in mind. And I'll show you a better example of that. So these, just like your clear stamps, oops. here they go, sorry. Hmm. They come off just like they do. And then this is what you're gonna attach to your acrylic block or to your stamp positioner. I love this one. Um, a lot of stamp companies are getting into enamel pins right now, which I guess is a big trend. But I do have the reindeer pin because it's adorable. Oh, there's a cat. I have cats. Sorry. <laughs> They're mad I'm not sitting with them. Ah, I'll do it later. Anyway, so this is like another one, just a bunch of sentiments. Same thing with the rubber. This is a good example of how the size is a little different on the cover. So this is huge. This is a big difference. That's my one thing I would hope she changes a little bit. Because when you see these online, if you buy them online, it is kind of like, oh, wow, they're a lot bigger. Then it shows on the front. And then there's background stamps, and these are huge. Um, and the stamp, stamp position I'm going to show you um, I have the smaller one, but they do make larger ones. Um, you probably would want to get one for one of these stamps. Or what you can do is when you're using these, you can just turn it on its back, ink it up, and then press down really firmly. And then you can get your stamped image that way. But I would recommend, you know, a large stamping positioner tool for these. But these are great. You can use the entire stamp. Or you can just use, like, you know, you just want a portion of it. It's really awesome. And this is another one, another holiday, wintery one. So let me show you how that works. So I already showed you the acrylic blocks. So I already put one of the reindeers on here. Reindeer. I don't think deers is plural. Okay, so you see that? Okay. So you just take it off, and you put it on, and you have the different size acrylic blocks. I'll put those to the side. So this is called a mini Misty. So this is an example of a stamp positioning tool. Now it's, this is a small one and I use this all the time. Um, unless I do like bulk stamping, like say the holidays are coming and I just want to stamp a bunch of images at once, uh, I do use a larger one. But this is what I use pretty much most of the time. So basically it's got this plastic cover and it's got a grid and then it's all magnetic. So now what's great about this is this spongy foamy part comes out for those thicker rubber stamps I just showed you. So when you're using your clear thinner stamps, you use the foamy part. So you put the foamy part in and then you can use, this is just grid paper to help you line things up. You can see mine has been loved. And then you put your paper down with a magnet. It comes with the magnets. I like these bar ones. Um, they kind of hold it a little steady or comes with little small disc ones. So I already inked this up. So 
you want to put your, I guess you'd call it your engraved side down onto your paper, and then the flat side is what's sticking to your plastic panel. So you figure where you want to put it, we'll just put it in the center here, and then you close your lid, press it down, I use my elbow a lot, sorry. And then I usually use, this is my go-to black ink, it's by Lawn Fawn. It's a premium ink pad, jet black color. Um, this is great for Copic markers and for watercolors, which I'm really liking watercoloring. Um, I'm not great at it, but um, it's really fun. And like I said in my intro video, like I'm no expert at this and I'm not paid to do any of this. I'm just doing this for fun. And yeah, I wanna share my love of crafting with all of you. So you ink it down, you can see here, you can see how much ink is on there, right? Hopefully that's pretty good. And then you just close it. And then, sorry, I'm getting my elbow in here. And you push it down. And then you have your stamped image. Now, I like my images to be darker and very crisp. This is not. So what's easy about this is, your stamp is already here and it's not gonna move. So you just take your ink pad, ink it up again. And then you just keep stamping it until you get, get it how dark the lines you want. So that's a little bit better, but I want it a little darker. I don't want all this white in here, over here. See that? Yeah. So it might take a few times, but what's great about this is you can see how much or how little is on the is on your stamp. And then if you're doing bulk stamping, like say I'm doing multiple pages with this stamp, I can just, you know, I know where it's positioned. And then I can just redo it. So I just close it again. This will probably be the last time. That's perfect. So that's how I would like it. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And then I didn't, um, I didn't um, soak this up yet, but this is called a stamp chamois. This is also by Lawn Fawn. This is really great. It's this, it's kind of a stiff, um, like cloth, if you will, and then once you put it in water, it gets, um, you know, gets wet and it soaks up the water, and then you can, it's pliable, and you can use it to just wipe off your stamps, and then it's clean after. And then when you're done with your stamps, you just put them away, put them back in their plastic, and you're good to go. So I hope that was helpful as an intro. Um, if you have any comments or questions, uh, leave them down there, and um, probably the next one I do will be about dyes. All right, so thanks for watching and have a good night. Thank you.